So we're in the Belgium League today doing Genk as a rebuild. This club is not that old of a club, but they are well known for the youth academy, producing players like Yannick Krasko, Jelly Fossen, Dennis Pratt, Christian Benteke, Thibaut Courtois, Devor Origi, Kevin De Bruyne, Leonardo Trossard, and they've also brought in players that's played with them like Koulibaly, Wilfred Amenditi, Leon Bailey, Sandra Burge. So they are well known for the talent they can produce. So we're going to see if we're going to, we can take this team, bring in some Belgium talent, and win the Champions League with them. So we start the season off by acquiring the 20-year-old center back from Standard Liège for 13.4 million, Seenhol and Husden. So my, I'm going to try to acquire a bunch of young talent and just try to be patient, let it grow by getting them playing time. Okay, time for some player sales. Danny Fukovic, the goalie, goalkeeper, goalie, has been sold standard early age for 550000 Center midfielder, his Patrick Arsowski, has gone to Buenos Aires for a release clause of $7.2 million. Shere Yoronin is going to Lille for $7.2 million. And Jean Vlokumi is going to Monaco for $9.6 million. So we made a swap deal for the young teenage prodigy striker Charles D. Ketelaire. He's joining us from Club Bruges. We're sending over Junior Ito and $4 million. Welcome to Club Charles. Another swap deal got the teenage American Giovanni Reina, whose dad was a major factor in the 90s American national teams. He's coming over from Dortmund, and we're sending Daniel Munoz and $9.8 million. Welcome to the club, Giovanni. So a quick look at the start of the Youth Academy that they ha the game automatically gave to me. I got the player's attention had some really nice high ratings, especially this 15-year-old from the Netherlands, Jesse Bohr. But I'm going to go ahead and sign Riznar and Thorne to my first team, maybe see if I can get them out on loan to help them improve, and... See if they can be a piece in the future. We have Suns teenage center midfielder from Standard Liege, Nicol Nicholas Raskins, for $8 million. So, still making a run with teenage boys becoming men on my team. We went. So, here we are, grab another teenage. Here we are grabbing another teenager. We've got 19-year-old Yari for Sharon from Werder Bremen for $7.5 million. So we've sold one of the old men on the team, Dries Valters, to Norwich for $3.9 million. Yes, I know Dries is like mid-20s, but this team, that's old. We've sold the Norwegian Christian Thorsved to Napoli for $5 million, plus a few extra. Another sale, Carlos Cuesta, the... Colombians going to Feyenoord for $7.9 million. So with the money we got from Mr. Cuesta, we've upgraded at center back. We've, we've acquired Sebastian Bornau from Colm for $12.3 million. Plus a pretty big sell-on clause, but I don't plan on selling him in this rebuild, but you never know. So that's the end of the transfer window. I would say we completely overhauled the roster. But here in just a moment, we will take a quick look and see what it looks like now. Okay, that's better. Here's my roster. As you see, pretty much everybody on the team is in the 70s, except for my goalkeeper. But like I said, this is a youth moment. Movement. Movement. And my average age of my entire team is 20.8 years old. I have two players that are 25 or older, and one of them is Onachu, who happens to be, in real life, the leading scorer in the Belgian Pro League, and I believe Bagando, it's, no, he's 24, but anyways, yep, this is what our team looks like. So a little thin on the bench, but with no European football, and this league doesn't have as many games as some of the others not as important right now so off January 1st see how our boys grow so I sold Matt Muller dollar to Real Valley lid 
tongue tied here right now for three point eight five million dollars. I had just had to. He's twenty five years old. He's I mean, decrepit old for this team. So before we get to January first, I'm gonna quickly show some of the youth squad members I'm gonna promote the team to well get the team's average age below twenty and just so I can have somebody on the bench. So here's some of the players I have read in the youth squad. Uh as you see I have Mr. Bohr, but I've got here's a guy, Mr. Ashton Dubois, seventeen year old midfielder on either side, sixty five rated and potential somewhere eighty two to ninety four, so that's definitely gonna be worth calling up. And for now that be it. I've got these guys here. I may call Lowers eh, is 15, so he's not ready. We'll go ahead and call it Mr. Ver Verhelst, and hopefully I can get him on loan to help him develop quicker. So anyway, Jerry first. Here we go. So we're sitting in sixth place now, which is a little back, farther back than what the game probably expect, but. Then again, I traded out my whole team to acquire the entire Belgian boy band club. So as expected, but I'm looking for a strong start. And the positive thing is we're only 9 out of 2nd. So I doubt I'll do anything in this transfer window. Because the, the money I got from the last couple player sales, I think I'm going to hold on next year and see if I can go all in for one player to majorly improve position. So let's see if this transfer window is going to be quiet. Yep, we're going to just roll with this young team. Luckily, I know they'll stay in focus. They won't be going to any bars, or at least the majority of the team won't. But let's go to the end of the year, see if we can creep up into some European football positions. I've had a couple players say they want to cancel their contract if they're not promoted. So we're promoting Jesse Bohr because even though his potential is not as high as it once showed, 64 16, if he's not used I can definitely sell him and then Mr. Leclerc who has a high potential ceiling of 92 Schmidt is up to 61 even though he doesn't have high potential so in general that's gonna be a player that you can get a good bargain good price for at 61 16 and you don't have to worry about him not getting reaching high potential then also Mr. Noel is gonna be promoted with to the squad along with Jonas Nies. So yeah, pretty much everybody here is being promoted except for Familia. Okay, here we are at the end of the season. And then Belgium does a different format from most of Europe for the games. They split into three rounds once they finish two round robin tables. We finished that round robin table at seventh level on with Charleroi and points, but we drew fifteen times. The top four go to battle to see who wins the league title. The the next four battle to see who wins the final spot in Europe football. And then the rest of the league battles to avoid not going down. So the Champions League was Club Bruges. And then we finished second in the battle for the fi final playoffs European spot behind Ghent. We lost the finals of the Crokey Cup to Standard Liege. I have terrible luck with these League Cups. I finish runner-up as much as I win it. Leipzig won the Champions League trophy over Man City on penalties. Here's a quick look at how the team has progressed through this first season. Now that most of them have actually hit the tender age of 20, maybe even 21. Ooh. But we got a good portion of the team up in the middle high 70s. So going in season two uh, maybe I don't want to but I probably need to find a better quality goalkeeper because I don't I don't know how long I can run with a 71 goalkeeper trailing the rest of the team that much so but we'll see see you guys in season two real quick we did have three players get sold two that were out in loan Elias Sierra got sold to Yupin for 1.2 million Luka Oyen got sold to Cassia Mapasa, the Turkish club, for $1.5 million. And the veteran for the squad, he was sold, Brian Hainan, was sold to Crystal Palace for $9.7 million. Good luck in the Premier League, Brian. Now we're off to Season 2. 
So the two guys I spent last season on loan. Joseph Pansteel is going to Club Bruges for 5.5 .5 million, and Catherine Denori going to Hoffenheim for 5.7. Another guy who spent last season on loan, Stephen O'Day. We've sold him off to FC Ameliaco for 1.9 million, the Portuguese club. So we made our first signing this year. We've signed Jason Denayer from Leon, the Belgian veteran. For we sent 32 million dollars to them. So we have sold Ivan Violet to Nottingham Forest for 1.9 million. So basically, anybody that was on loan last year, eh, just gonna get my money for you. So I had to sell Gerardo Artiaga or Artega, depending on how you pronounce it, to Nunez for 18.5 million. He's naturally a left back, left winger, so he didn't really fit in the scheme. So good luck in Argentina, Gerardo. So that's it for this transfer window. I've got money in the bank. I just couldn't acquire the players I wanted. It, this transfer window just didn't go like I planned. But it is what it is. I do have the young squad, so hopefully I can grow into it, and Mr. Denayer's leadership will help. So, see you guys January 1st. See if we're in any be better position than last year. So here we are January 1st, and we're sitting in 5th, but only 2 points out of 3rd, so I'll take it. It's not too bad. Uh, leading the way is Anderlecht. So let's see if I can actually pull off some business this transfer window. Not going to be a popular move, but we've sold the striker Paul Nachu to Ajax for $24.4 million. And we've brought in the 22-year-old Senegalese uh, winger slash striker from Sporting Crepin Diada. In real life, he's currently playing for Club Bruges, I believe. But we've brought him in here to Genk for $43 million. So that was it for the business this window. Just Onachu out, Diada in. So let's go to the end of the season and see if we can get into European football for next year. So while I was doing some youth academies scouting, I came across these two gentlemen right here, and especially Mr. Tiago Verhaven, who's already a 68 rated at age 17, and I've I have a feeling this potential is probably going to be that high 80s. So I'm going to go ahead and promote Mr. these two to the squad and see how they fill out. Oh, we just missed out on winning the league. Fit only two points back of Anderlecht. And we made a, wow, a bunch of draws in that round. But we do at least have Europa League football, and I'm not sure we might even be in the qualifying rounds for Champions League. I'm not exactly sure those, how the qualification spots go for the Belgium League, but anyways. Club Bruges defeated Standard Liège to win the Croquet Cup. We lost to Club Bruges in the very first round. Spurs defeated PSG to win the Champions League. And Arsenal defeated Lazio to win the Europa League. So we didn't really have one big goal score, but we did have a uh, consistent score across the board. De Ketelaer with the most with 10 goals. So here's a quick look at the rest of the stats. So here's the way the team shapes up right now with with several of them getting into the low 80s or uh, got what four or five people at 79. But it looks like I am going to have to get another goalkeeper. Vanderfort's just behind the pace of everybody. But maybe we'll be able to acquire a goalkeeper loan Vandervoort out on loan and see what happens. So, anyways, off to season three and some European football for us. So we start the season off bringing back a former Gink player. We've we've brought back Leon Bailey from Leverkusen in exchange for Joachim Miley and twenty-seven million dollars. Bailey's two overall better and two years younger than Miley. But welcome back to Gank, Leon. Hopefully you will be as big difference now as you were then. So we sold Theo Bunganda to Roma for $31.3 million. And we brought in another Belgium, Alexi Salmikers. He's coming in from AC Milan for $26.1 million. So I'm going to shift Reina to a center forward position. And I was right the second time with the Champions League. We made it. We had two rounds of play, 
We made it through qualifying round against last 7-4 aggregate. And we made it through Basel 7-5 aggregate to get to the Champions League group stage, which we'll find out here in a moment. We sold reserve center back Sean Adewoye to Wolfsburger for 740000 So that'll be it for this transfer window. Not nearly as busy as the first year, but I think we made some improvements and we got some stability. So let's quickly take a look at our Champions League group. Ooh, didn't get a whole lot of favors. We drew Barcelona, Lazio, and Lech Poznan in the Polish club. I do think we should be able to finish ahead of Poznan to at least qualify for knockout stage for Europa. But, uh, hey, anything can happen. So we'll see the results here in 3, 2, 1. So we did finish where I thought we would. We finished third in the group. Uh, we did manage to draw a game off of Lazio, though, so that was a positive. But we'll see here in a moment who we draw in the round of 32 with the Europa. So, yeah, we'll get Spr Sparta Braha. So, maybe we'll do well in the Europa League. So, how we're doing in the Belgian League as of January 1st. Ah, we're leading the league. But look, the press thing, even though we only have, we run a system with only three center backs in the back, we've only allowed 14 goals the entire season in the league. So, that's, that's positive. So let's see if we do anything in this transfer window to boost our Europa League chances. Nope, no business transfer window, so we're just going to go to the end of the season, see if we can pull home some hardware. And we brought home our first silverware, winning the league over Anderlecht, Bruges, and Kent. We did the domestic double, winning the Crokey Cup over Circle Bruges. Well, at least we lost to the Champions League champions with Barcelona defeated by Union on penalties. And in what normally it looks like a Champions League final, Manchester City defeated Real Madrid to win the Europa League. We actually lost in the round of 16 to Real Madrid. What an unfortunate draw there. Now, we, we definitely scored some goals this year. Mr. Leon Bailey, his first year back at Kank, 31 goals. Diado at 24. The Ketelaire with 21. Brano with 11. So, yeah, it wasn't that spread out, but we certainly put the, back, the ball in the back of the net. And here's a look at where we're sitting at. As you see, my whole lineup, except for my midfield's above 80. Um, so, I'm probably going to see if I can get a younger. Denayer is sort of his purpose, but now he's going to the age where he his value is going to go up because he's going to demand big contracts. So I may flip to see if I can replace him. I might go after a center midfielder, but I don't want to get rid of for Sharon, so maybe I'll put him out on loan. Uh, other than that, and then other than that, I may do the same thing with Vanderford. Just kind of depends on who's available, what kind of money I get from the board for next year. So we're going on season four, see if we can advance into the group stages of the Champions League. So we start the season off by selling Jason Denayer to Sevilla for $41.4 million. So time to see if I can get something close to his rating, but much younger. Mission accomplished. For, got, we signed Bubakar Kamara from Burnley for $65.2 million. Same overall as Mr. Denayer, but five years younger. So we sold Striker Serial Dessers to Feyenoord for $5 million. So that's it for this transfer window. I'm going to leave about $40 million in the bank because I'm going to wait to see if my center midfielders can grow. And if if they're not growing anymore by by then, then maybe I'll make a swap deal for, for a higher rate of midfielder. Anyways, let's see who we have in our Champions League group this year. Well, we once again got Lazio on the group, and instead of Barcelona, we got Bayern. <laughs> then we have Kiev in there. So... I think, I mean, obviously I think we'll finish at least third, but I want to see if we can sneak back Lazio this year. I don't see us beating Bayern. Anyways, let's go January 1st, see if we qualify for the knockout stages. Nope, once again, we finished the same positions last year, so on to Europa League. So can we at least maintain the top of the Belgium League? Well, we do have that. We're leading by 4 over standard league each. We've, we've got a massive goal difference, so 
Anyways, transfer market. Not sure what I'm going to do yet. So, let's see. So, I accidentally skipped over the transfer. But, as you see, all I did was two loan deals in the last two months. I'm going to hold on to my money. I actually think I've got a plan for next year. But, I'm going to need all the money from this year. So, anyways, we're going to go in the season and see how many trophies we can take home. And, look at that. With a championship round, we finished strongly to take the league title over Ghent. But we couldn't redeem a domestic double again, losing eight goal thriller to Charleroi. Liverpool defeated Spurs to take the Champions League. And Monaco took the Europa League over Atalanta. We lost to Monaco in the semis on 4 3 aggregate. I told you we were a scoring machine. Three guys bagged over 30 goals this year. Mr. Bailey and Mr. Bailey and Diada both bagged over 20 in the Belgium League. And with 35 goals, Bailey also had 19 assists. Some impressive stats, even though the Belgium League isn't one of the big five. And here's a quick look at the team going into year five. I am going to have to sell for Sharon. He only went up one this year, and I believe he's only went up three and two. So this team's outgrowing him by far. So he's definitely going to be the move I'm going to have to make. The rest of the guys, like Mr. Th the Ketelaire is already up to 86. Mr. Reyna is up to 84. Mr. Bailey to 87. So we're looking good for next year. So on to Season 5 to see if we can get to the Knockout Stage Champions League. So start off the season by selling Yari for Sharon to Torino for $27.6 million. And from the well-known Kank Youth Academy, it's the great, we bring back the greatest player of them all in my opinion. We're bringing Kevin De Bruyne back to Belgium from Man City for $110 million. That's the big move I'm going to make. So the only move we made was change up the midfielder. So let's see what we have for a group stage in the Champions League. And somehow for the third straight year we've drawn Lazio in our group. Now instead of the big name ones, we also drew Leon and then Locomotive Moscow, so I think we should definitely finish second, but we, but I really would like to beat Lazio and finish top of the group, so we'll find out here in January 1st in 3, 2, 1. And look that, we came up out top of the group ahead of Lazio and Leon. That's the jump I want to make, and in the next round of 16, we're facing Chelsea. Ooh, well, Lazio got Real Madrid. Glad we won the group. And midway point in the Belgium League, only one loss. We were averaging almost two and a half goals a game. We were running away with it. So this will be the last season we'll do a mid-season check. As you know, these leagues outside the Big Five, you tend to run away in these rebuilds. So let's see if we do any business this transfer window. We sold reserve Brian Limbombe to KV Mechelen for $1.45 million. So that was it for the transfer window. We're going to quickly take a look at the squad and talk about the youth, the youth academy a little bit. And then we're going to head to the round of 16. So here's the squad. Now we're going to take a look at a few of the players that we've signed through the youth academy where they're at. We have Mr. Verhoeven, who's now 20 with a 74. That's pretty solid. Um, you may not recognize Mr. Negrin, but he actually was on loan the first season. He's a really nice piece. I used him in the Goldberg rebuild. Also from the Youth Academy, at 68, Mr. DeSchmidt, Walters, who's only 18, and Mr. Bohr, who's 20. He's from the original Youth Academy. And most of these players down here are actually all Youth Academy products. Mr. Rawls, who's 17, at 67. The rest of these players are in the 19 through 21 range. So, and Mr. Depot last year, I think, is 18. The clerk. So these guys, the problem is, is, when they sit on your bench in the reserves, they don't really develop but one or two. They develop more when they're out on loan. Or if they're in the substitutes, then they play more. So, But anyway, so now we've had that quick look, talk about the youth academy a little bit. We're now going to move on to the round of 16 of the Champions League. Here we are in the round of 16 uh, at Stamford Bridge against Chelsea. Just so happened, not only did De Bruyne start his career at Genk, but when he left Genk, he went to Chelsea. 
So he's facing his former squad at Chelsea. So, full lineup, everybody's healthy. Let's see if we can pull out victory. 2-0 win, goal by Diana and Mr. De Bruyne got a goal in his return to Chelsea. Here we are with the home leg against Chelsea up 2-0. I am missing Mr. Diata. So Mr. Nigrin is in there, and I'm going to put the Catalier in a striker. So all we need is to maintain a lead. Another win, 2-1. Reyna and Mr. Bailey with goals. On to the quarterfinals. So lucky us. Quarterfinals, we draw Real Madrid, who beat that Lazio team that's given us trouble for three years. Aggregate 5-0. So we do start off at home. Oh, we do have a full complement of players. Let's see how we stack up against the big boys. Come on, come on. Result says 2-1 loss. Diana got a goal in there. Valverde and Campbell scored for them. So we're heading to the Bernabeu with a 2-1 deficit. Not looking good, but hey, let's see what we can do. Uh, exact same score, Diada with another goal. So we are out in the quarterfinals. So we're on to the end of the season. Make sure, see if we took home the domestic double. Once again, we easily won the Belgium League, this time over Standard Liège. Inter Milan defeated FC Barcelona to win the Champions League. And for the second time this rebuild, Manchester City won the Europa League. And by the way, if before anybody asks, for some reason the game didn't do a Belgium Cup this year, so I don't have any results for that. So we didn't score quite as much as last year, but still, Diada with 24 goals, De Bruyne are chipped in 19-18, Mr. Bailey definitely didn't have as many goals, but 13 assists. So here's a chance to look at the stats for the rest of the team. And here's a quick look at the team. Uh, as you see, I even got bench. Mr. Negrin's going to be in a 80s next year, so I think my improvement next year is probably going to be here at right midfield with Mr. Sailmakers, because he didn't even put in a goal this year and only four assists, so that might be the move I make, just depends on what kind of money I get. So, we're going on to season number six, see if we can get that European trophy. And we've sold Mr. Sailmakers to PSG for $80 million. Now, luckily, a lot of my attacking players are versatile where I can move them all over the place, so I can kind of try to find the best fit for the right price and not at be worried about quite as much what position. So, let's see who I can acquire. So, I've went out and found myself another attacking player. He's going to play center forward, and somebody I don't think I've ever signed a rebuild, but we've signed the Portuguese player, Diogo Jota, from Liverpool for $122.1 million. So I needed a little extra on my bench as my best defensive player off the bench is a 74 rating, rated. So I've signed the 34-year-old Greek center back Kostas Manolas from Real Madrid for $12.4 million. Even though I expect a big decline, I would still put him around 80, 79. So he's good enough to be coming off the bench for us. So we sold the 17-year-old left back Jordan Rolls to Zulta Vergen. Again. 1.95 million. Often people would wonder why you'd sell a 69, 68 rated 17 year old left back. Well, that's because we don't use left to right backs. So we only have center backs. And his defensive work weight is low. So he doesn't fit our system. So we got a nice little cash deal for him. So that's all the business we did. I'm, I've got about 30 million in the bank. I'm going to hold on to it. I think with growth, this starting lineup will be very good. So. I'll hold on to the money in the bank, see if I need to pick up a reserve or two for the bench at the January window. So, let's see who we have in our Champions League group. Hey, look, I can't play in a group without Lazio. That's uh, at first. But what's amazing is the other three teams in my group I've already had in group stages in the previous three years. Bayoun, Kiev, and Moscow. But So, I expect this ease the qualification of group stage. It's just a matter if we can beat Bayoun out for the top spot. We'll find out here in three two, one. And look at that. We came out on top of the group with 14 points over Bayern. And our, when we get to face Leverkusen in the round of 16, while Bayern gets rewarded with Real Madrid again for the second place team for my group. Whew. Real Madrid was pretty rough. 
So anyways, transfer business this window. Let me follow wait and see what's going on. No, didn't move any players. Decided since it worked out to Bruyner, I'll hold on to the money till next year and see if maybe I can get another big player since the budget just hasn't quite gone out to where I can get a acquisition better than what I have on the team. So let's go the round of 16 faced by you never cousin. So here we are, the road for the round of 16 matchup against Leverkusen. Full lineup at our disposal. So let's just get on into it. I'll score. 2 nothing loss. I kind of wasn't expecting that. So here we are at home for Leverkusen. We have to make up a two goal deficit. If we give up a goal, then we got to win by three. So this is going to be massive. Full lineup available. The results will say... Not good enough. Goal in the 89th minute by Bornau. But that's ending a disappointing run. So on to the end of the season. See, we actually get some silverware. So we took the Belgium League title again by 9 over Standard Liege. Anderlecht took the Crokey Cup over Michelin. Barcelona went on to beat Leipzig to win the Champions League. And the year after they won the Champions League, Inter Milan took the Europa League title over Celta. Here's the stats on the season. Mr. Diotto with 37 goals on the season. So his performance hasn't dropped off. Everybody else has had. So, on to the next season. I was hoping to have De Bruyne here for the championship title, but unfortunately it doesn't look like that's going to happen because... He's now got a point where I'm going to need to replace him. But we'll see what I can do for next season. See you then. So we start off the season by exchanging center midfielders. Mr. De Bruyne is heading to Real Madrid. And we're bringing back the Japanese wonder kid, Takefusa Kubo. And we sent $82 million along with Mr. De Bruyne. Hopefully Real Madrid can use it. Well, or maybe not. Boy... This is it. Just the center midfielder swap. We're going to go see our group for the Champions League. Redundancy in the third year. Once again, we draw Bayoun, and then we have PSV and Malmo. So, uh, let's just get January 1st, see where how we finish up in this group in 3, 2, 1. So, once again, we finished level 1 points with Bayoun, but we finished ahead of them due to goal difference. In the round of 16, we will face Chelsea. Well, by you and get Juventus. So, let's see if we do any business transfer window before we get on to that Chelsea match. Nope, falling in the pattern of no mid-season transfer business, so heading to the fixture with Chelsea. So here we are, traveling Stamford Bridge again. Ch face Chelsea. Mr. Jolta is out, so Mr. Nigren is in play. Center forward, the results will say can we left with a 2-0 win on the road. Scores by Duquetelair and Reina, but Duquetelair also missed a penalty. So so we got our full complement lineup for our home leg against Chelsea. Leading 2-0 aggregate. 2-2 two -two draw, good enough for me, though kind of surprising we gave up the two goals. Uh, Jolta and Diada with the goals. So in the quarterfinals, we actually avoided Real Madrid. We got Valencia. So we're traveling to Spain with our full lineup intact. Let's see the results. I'm hoping for a win. 2-1 win. Goals by Diada and Reina. So we're now at home with nursing a 2-1 lead over Valencia. Our full lineup's intact. Let's see if we can finally advance to the semis. 1-1 one, one draw is good enough for me. Goal by Mr. Van Hoosden. So here we are in the semifinals. We're going to end up facing Man City. And for something that don't happen often in these rebuilds, four different leagues are represented in the semifinals. So we'll get to the fixture here in just a moment. And we are in the Etihad in Manchester. Our full allotment players are available. So let's take them on. Can we pull out victory on the road? No, but we do have a way goal. We lost 2-1. to one. Goal by Dekitelair. We, oh, we started the game off with a lead and gave it right back. 
So we're back in Belgium. We are trailing two to one, but I'm optimistic. Everybody's available, ready to play. So, can we pull it off? No, another two one loss. Oh, well, we did get the semis this year, but man, this is getting redundant. And Man City went on to lose the Champions League to Borussia Dortmund. Spurs went on to beat Hertha Berlin in the finals of the Europa League. We easily took the finals of the Belgian League, as you see there. We went 6-0 in the championship round with 16 goals and 0 allowed. And we finally got back the Kroki Cup, the Belgian Cup, defeating Anderlecht 1-0. So here's a quick look at our lineup. As you see, several players getting into the 90s. Mr. Tukedelaer is all the way up to 95. But my move for next year is probably going to be sell Mr. Reyna as much as I don't want to sell the American. He literally did not change overall at all this year despite only being 24 years old. So that's my sign that he's done growing or just not going to grow fast enough. So we're going to take a quick look at stats and head on to season 8. Ugh. I was really thinking I'd be done with this rebuild before this. And look at that, Mr. Kettelaire with 36 goals on the season. Mr. Reyna had 22 in only 55 games, but again, just got to change something. So here's a look at the rest of the stats, and then on to Season 8. Championship trophy or bust. So for the season, we are going to shatter the record transfer. For a player, we've sold Giovanni Reyna to Manchester City for $300 million. And if I'm able to complete my next move, that will not last very long, I think. I told you that wasn't going to last long. We have went out and signed for PSG, Mr. Kylian Mbappe, for a bargain price of $356,900,000. Welcome to Belgium, Kylian. So brought in strength in the bench, center back Davidson Sanchez. He's coming in from Manchester City for $25 million, I believe it was. And uh, he was a free agent, so we're going to bring in the Spaniard, Coque, to be our, our center midfielder coming off the bench, as you can see. So he sold off two youth academy projects. Nathan Noel is going to Leuven to, for $980,000. Dorian Devos going to Lugano for $800,000. So that would be all of our businesses transfer window, all 700 million of it. And here's a look at our squad. Everybody's at 88 and above. With Kamal. And then I've got Mbappe, who of course comes in at 95. Mr. Decadalaire is in at 96. So that's how we're looking like. Um, we've seen the prospects for, but Mr. Dubois actually was on loan the last time we checked out the prospects. He's now 24, but up to 76. So here's some further look at some of the players. Could use a little stronger bench, but we'll go with what we have. So on to see our group this time, Champions League. So we've got Man U, Rennes, and once again, Locomotives Moscow. So can we finish top of the group? We'll soon find out here in just one moment. So we made it pretty clear through the group stage. Uh, Leet went in the group ahead of Manchester City. I mean, Manchester United, pardon me. And we draw Inter Milan in the round of 16. So quickly see if any transfer window in business goes down. Doubt it. Doubt confirmed. On to the round of 16 fixture. So there we are at the San Zero. We're going to take on Inter Milan while we're on the road. Uh, we have our full squad at our disposal. So let's see. Final score will be 2-0 away. Van Hoosden missed a penalty. What's he doing taking penalties? Diego Jota and Bailey got goals for us. So now home for Inter Milan. We're going to just get to the game. Should be foregone to conclusion for the fixture. Yep, 1-1 one, one tie. Ba Mr. Bailey scored in the 84th minute. So, quarterfinals. Man U, we are starting at home. Mr. Mbappe is out due to red cards. Mr. Koke is playing central fielder. So, the result is a 1-1 tied. Mr. Diana scoring with the 82nd minute. 
So we're off to Old Trafford here with our full lineup intact. It was 1-1 one, one draw on the home leg, so we need a victory. And we didn't get it. 2-1 loss. So once again, we did win the Belgium League, even though we faltered towards the end there a little bit. Dortmunds went back-to-back to being -back to Juventus on Champions League. And Benfica defeated Milan winning the Europa League. And for those wondering, there was no Croaky Cup this year for us. So here's the stats in the season. Uh, just in case you can't tell, I'm starting to get a little annoyed because we have basically been idle in the same area for four to five years. So I'm going to have to get rid of somebody I wasn't planning on getting rid of because it's time to make the push to finally bring home that European trophy. To start off this ninth season, they said they weren't willing to pay $200 million for a player, so I got Napoli to agree to buy Leon Bailey for $199,999,999. Okay, after trying to figure out where I can stick players where, we have went out and signed the Frenchman Eduardo Camavinga. He's coming over from Barcelona for $200 million. So that's all I did, even though I do have $100 million, but obviously when you get to the level this team's at, which you'll see in a moment, it takes a lot of money to get, improve your team at all. So anyways, let's take a look at the Champions League group and our team in general. Here's a quick look at the team. As you see, it's Kamara still lagging behind. The problem is there's so few center backs in this game that get to 90, especially if they're not on your team as dynamic potential doesn't kick in for the CPU teams or not near, nearly as much but look at that Decadalair is up to a 98 we still have Mbappe at 95 Mr. Vanderfort who started at 68 with this team is now up to a 94 so let's take a look at that group standing Ah, so we got a different team this time we got Salzburg in there and then we have Leon second time and Shakhtar Donetsk. So, results of the group here in 2-1. Okay, didn't make any moves. I just couldn't find a deal for a player to improve the team, and I didn't want to go out and get more reserves since I'm scared we may not win the Champions League, as, as we haven't done the last two or three years. So, we're just going to take it as is and move on to the round of 16. So, here we are, the round of 16 matchup in Belgium. We're going to just get straight into it. Results will be... 2-1 win, uh, braced by Decadalaire. So here we are for the way fixture. We're up 2-1, full complement lineup. And the result says 4-3, but that but we get to go on away the penalty goals. Oh, wow, look at that. It was 2-1 it was going into extra time, and then in the 30 minutes, Silas Sane scored for them and Camavinga and De Ketelaer for us. Wow, that must have been a heck of a game to watch. So for the quarterfinals, we get drawn against Manchester United. We're starting off the away leg at Old Trafford. We got a full team, so let's get into it. Results will say 1-1 draws. Mr. Diotto with a goal in the 80th minute. So here we are, back at home against Manchester U. 1-1 uh, one, one is aggregate, so scoreline breed, 3-1 win, goals by Mr. Camavinga, Mbappe, and Diada. So, semifinals, we get to take on the other team from Manchester, Manchester City. So, let's see how this matchup will go for us. So, we're facing the team that knocked us out of the semifinals last year, or at least that's what I think I remember. So, full lineup, we're playing at home to start off this fixture. Scoreline reads 3-1 goals by Mbappe to Ketelaire in the first minute and well, two goals by Mbappe. And if we could make a penalty it would be 4-1. But that's the good start. So can we finally get to the championship? The finals. All we have to do is just not choke. The scoreline this game is 2-0 win, Mr. Jolta and Kettler with another goal. Finally! I was getting to wonder if we'd ever get here. So in the final, we get AC Milan, who defeated Liverpool, to get here. 
So let's just get to the finals, see if we can accomplish the goal. So here we are in the finals against Milan. We don't have any red cards there by full health. And sitting here in Barcelona, not Barcelona, in Madrid. Can we take home the championship? Yes! 2-1, Mr. Mbappe scoring in the 76th minute. That's nice. They got one... I see this too often. The other team gets like one shot and they always score on it, but my team gets like 36 and gets like two. But doesn't matter. The trophy's ours. We pulled the domest the double off. But we couldn't do the trouble because apparently any team I am the manager of cannot win a cup when it's supposed to. Standard of the age won the croquet cup. Arsenal won what seems like their 753rd Europa trophies in these rebuilds. And here's our squad. As you see, everybody's 89 or higher. And, well, it is what it is. Quick look at the stats here. And Mbappe's back, 37 goals on the year. So go scroll down. And I always do one more year in the rebuild after a Champions League title. Because I always give the team a chance to pull off back to back. So we're going to go to what would be year 10 and see if we can do it with a quick rundown of the final year. So our transactions this year was simple. I needed a younger midfielder, so I got the Belgian Aster Franks for $81 million from uh, Real Valio build. And then I got younger on the winger, getting Mr. Doku from Aston Villa for Diego Jota, Jota and 5.1 million. No surprise here. Now this is a surprise. We actually won the cup this time over Royal Antwerp. Liverpool defeated Hertha Berlin in the Europa League. We took the Super Cup to begin the year over Arsenal. And look at that. We were able to repeat in the Champions League, defeating Atletico Madrid, which that's the first time I've seen them in this rebuild, which is unusual. But back to back. Here's the goals for the season. Diada came back strong this year. 38 goals, 16 assists. So four guys over 20 goals. So that's the way to do it. And a final look at the team. As you see, Mr. Ketelaire is up to a 99. And Mr. Mbappe is at 97. And then don't forget Mr. Vanderfort, who is a member of Genk in real life right now. So he's still our goalkeeper. And in fact, he's still young. Yeah, he's only 28. And Mr. Kwasi is also with us at the beginning of the rebuild. So that's two. And Mr. Nigrin was on loan the first year. So that's three original Genk players that were still at, with us at the end. As far as the Youth Academy products. The highest rated ones is Mr. Dubois, who's a 77, and Mr. Verhoeven, who's a 75, as we have gotten rid of quite a few over the time. So that's it for this rebuild. Any suggestions of one you want to see, leave, a, leave it down below in the comments if you want to see more of these. I try to get them done. I try every week, but usually ends up being 8 to 10 days. Like this one I was expecting actually only lasts six or seven but at most but it is what it is so you guys enjoy enjoy your day and see you next time